Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about DC shunt motors. So, we know that the DC shunt motors falls under the category of self-excited motors. That means, we do not require any separate excitation for the field windings like in your separately excited DC motors. So, here in the DC shunt motors, the field winding, so this is your field winding which is having a resistance RSH and this is your armature. So, here the field winding is connected in parallel to the armature or you can say the field winding is shunted to your armature therefore as the field winding is shunted to the armature therefore this motor is said as a shunt motor or you can say the shunt form DC motor as the field winding are shunted to the armature. So if we discuss the voltage and current equations for the shunt motor so if I say V is the applied voltage from the electrical terminals and let me say IT is the total current which is flowing into this motor. So here uh, as the field winding and the armature are exposed to the same voltage that means at this point and, and at this point the voltage is exposed to the same supply and this at this point this armature is also exposed to the same supply that means they are parallelly connected and uh, as they are parallelly connected they are exposed to the same supply voltage that is V. Now if we write the voltage and the current equations of this decision motor here your I total is going to get divided into these parallel branches. So here let me say ISH is the current and this is my armature current IA. So if I write the current equation here, your I total will be given by your I total will be given by IA plus ISH where here in the armature circuit if I draw the inside part, so the inside part will look like this. So here I am having the back EMA. So this is my back MF and uh, there will be a small resistor that is RA and uh, here I am having a small voltage drop VB. So this is my back MF EB, this is RA and uh, here you are having a brush voltage that is a VB. So if I consider the brush voltage to be a very less value and uh, let us consider only this RA and EB and then my voltage V will be equal to EB plus IA RA and if I consider the brush voltage that is uh, uh, 1 or 2 volts uh, then it will be VB. So your V is given by EB plus IA RA plus VB and uh, from here I know my IA can be given as I total minus I shunt. So this is your IA let us plug this IA value here. So if I plug that IA value your V will be equal to EB plus I total minus I shunt into RA plus VB. So this is the voltage equation for the DC shunt motor and these are the basically current equations which are where the I total is going to divide into the parallel branches of the armature and the field winding. So basically if uh, if I say during the general uh, during the running conditions if I say the supply voltage V is constant let us say during the running conditions of the motor if I keep the supply voltage V as a constant then my I shunt motor that is I shunt current I shunt which is given as here the voltage is V and similar the voltage here is V so I shunt will be given as V upon RSH and uh, as the supply voltage is kept constant during the running conditions, this I shunt current remains constant. Your I shunt remains constant as I know my I shunt will be proportional to the flux. There is a flux linkage between the field windings and the armature windings. So as your I shunt is proportional to flux and where I shunt is kept uh, constant as we are uh, keeping the supply voltage constant therefore your I shunt becomes constant 
and as i shunt is proportional to phi your phi is more or less becomes constant and hence for this reason the shunt motors can be called as a constant flux motors as the flux remains constant here as you keep the supply voltage constant so this is the voltage and the current equations and uh, if i talk about the construction the construction is quite similar to some uh, the other types of dc motor where we say it is having a stator so if i write the pumps uh, it is having you can say it is having a stator and the pole faces or you can say the pole shoes and even you are having the armature core and uh, you are having a field winding field winding armature winding and the shaft and apart from this you are having the bearings you are having the bearings and uh, you can also see the brushes and the commutator segments at the armature terminals so these are the parts you can see in the construction i am not going to discuss detailly here anything about this construction but uh, i want to uh, tell you about a distinguishable feature of this shunt motor from other self excited motor that is a dc series motor so if we talk about the distinguished feature in terms of the torque generated so to produce a high torque so i know the torque electromagnetic torque will be proportional to the flux linkage between the field winding and the armature winding and uh, the product of the flux linkage in and armature current so in order to have a high value of torque so in order to have a high value of the electromagnetic torque what i want to do is i want to uh, expose my armature winding to a higher amount of current compared to the shunt current so compared to the shunt current i want to expose this armature winding to a higher value of current so that i will be having a higher amount of armature current thereby you are having higher electromagnetic torque and uh, this is the first thing your armature winding must be exposed to a large value of current compared to the shunt current or the uh, compared to the field winding current and uh, the second thing is uh, i can increase the electromagnetic torque by increasing the flux so this flux linkage can be increased your flux linkage can be increased by using more number of turns for this field winding so higher the number of turns many turns can be used for this field winding to produce the higher value of uh, flux linkage between the field winding and the armature winding thereby we are having the higher electromagnetic torque so in order to achieve this so in order to achieve this both things what i can do is so in order to increase the armature current i can insert some resistance here so let me say i can insert some resistance here so as i increase the resistance of this shunt branch more the there will be less resistance compared to this branch so current will be preferring to travel through this armature winding so i can do this uh, by increasing more resistance in this field winding and uh, you can easily increase the resistance of the uh, field winding by using thin conductors so by using thin conductors i can increase the resistance of this field winding uh, you can make the diameter of the conductors to be lesser or smaller diameter of the conductors to be used because i know my resistance is given by rho l by a so as the area of the conductors is becoming less your resistance is increasing very highly so as the resistance is increasing the current will prefer to flow in the branch which is having lower value of resistance so more the current will flow through this armature windings so one thing you can do is you can employ the thin conductors and for the higher value of flux you can use the more number of turns so more number of turns can be used to have a higher value of flux so these are the distinguishable features because in the dc series motor what we do is where the 
field winding is connected in series with the armature, we prefer in the DC uh, series motor as thick coil conductors. We use the thick coils for the field winding as uh, it is connected in series with the armature, but here we are using the thin conductors so that they can have higher value of resistance and more the current can flow through this armature winding and thereby we can have the higher electromagnetic torque. Now if you discuss the characteristics one by one, so let us first discuss the speed armature current, speed armature current characteristics. So let me plot a bigger curve for this. So let us say this is my speed n in rpm that is the rotation per minute and this is my armature current. So we know that if we see the formula for the speed uh, in relation with the armature current, so I know that the speed is proportional to, your speed is proportional to Eb upon phi or you can write in other terms speed is equal to Eb upon k phi. So because we know that your Eb is given as P phi nz upon 60a and uh, here I can write Eb is equal to k n phi because uh, your k is given by, k is a constant given by P z by 60a because uh, P is the number of poles and Z is the total number of armature conductors and A is the number of parallel paths where the poles are constant and the total number of armature conductors once inserted are constant as well as the number of parallel paths are constant. So I am representing these constant entities by a constant K. So your EB can be given as K and phi from here you can write this speed is equal to EB upon K phi. So from here you can notice that speed is proportional to the back EMF that is the EB and inversely proportional to the flux. So as the flux falls your speed increases and as the back EMF increases the speed increases. So I can know, uh, I also know that from here your EB if I neglect this breast drop your EB will be given by V minus IARA. So as your armature current increases, there will be the drop in the armature and as this drop increases, the back EMF reduces. Now as the back EMF is proportional to the speed or the speed is proportional to the back EMF, uh, there will be a reduction in the speed. So there will be reduction in the speed. Now if I plot the characteristics at no load, so when the motor is at no load, you will be having a normal speed. So this is your no load speed. Now when the machine is, when the motor is loaded, so when the motor is loaded, the drop in the armature increases and as the drop increases, the back MF falls and uh, as a result, your speed falls. So there will be a slight reduction or the drooping characteristics of the speed. So this is your speed and uh, we can notice here the speed is proportional to the back EMF and the back EMF is equal to V minus IARA and uh, you will witness the back EMF which is proportional to speed. So the characteristics of the, if I say the characteristics of the back EMF and the armature current and this back EMF is proportional to the speed. So the characteristics of the back EMF and the armature current as well as the speed and the armature current coincides because they are proportional quantities. So if I plot the back MF, so this will be your back MF characteristics coinciding the speed armature characteristics. So here you can write EB or you can say your speed, EB or your speed and uh, this line also represents your line voltage, line voltage. Now, when the motor is running, in general practice, if the voltage is kept constant, my I shunt value remains constant and as I shunt is proportional to the phi, your phi will remain more or less constant. 
Now at no load, if I say the flux is having a maximum value and as the load increases, there will be the weakening of the field flux due to armature reaction. So due to armature reaction, there will be a weakening of field flux and as a result, as the load increases, there will be a slight droop in the flux characteristics as the current increases. So as the load increases, the current armature current increases and as a result, the due to the reaction, that is the armature reaction, there will be a slight fall in the field flux. So if I draw the field flux characteristics, so it will be like this. So at no load you are having a maximum value and as the uh, load increases due to armature reaction there will be a slight fall in the flux characteristics. So this will be your flux and uh, in order to compensate the speed loss at the loading, so in order to compensate the speed loss at the loading, uh, one thing we can do is, so due to the armature reaction there will be the weakening of the flux. So we have noticed here there will be the weakening of flux and as there, there will be a less value of flux, you can increase your speed to a some extent. So you can compensate your speed to some extent and uh, the other thing you can do is, I can uh, compensate the speed by inserting a resistance in the shunt branch. So by increasing the resistance in the shunt branch, uh, I am making this part a lesser resistance path. So as the current prefers to travel through the less resistance path and there will be a smaller current flowing in this shunt branch and the smaller the current in this shunt branch, you are having the smaller value of flux. So as the smaller value of flux, there will be the higher value of speed and uh, the compensated speed if I draw it, so this will be your compensated speed somewhere in the middle of these two lines. So this is the speed armature current characteristics. Now if I plot the speed, uh, there is a torque and the armature current. So let me say this is uh, my electromagnetic torque and this is the armature current, electromagnetic torque in the Newton meters. So uh, let us derive that the torque equation from this EB, back MF equation. So from here I am having EB is equal to uh, P phi NZ upon 60A. So if I multiply this with IE on both sides, this will be my power. This is the effective, true effective power. So I know that the torque is given by, uh, your power is given by torque into omega. The torque is given by P upon omega, where your omega is nothing but uh, 2 pi N upon 60. So let us bury the torque. This is I am having a power and uh, power upon omega gives me the torque, that is the electromagnetic torque. So from here I can write Te is equal to where your P is nothing but uh, P phi Nz upon 60A. This is your power and uh, here I am having current and if I divide it with 2 pi N by 60, so it will be into 60 by 2 pi n. So from here your n n get cancelled, 60 60 get cancelled. So your electromagnetic torque will be given by P phi z i a upon 2 pi a. So from here you can notice that your torque T e is proportional to the armature current. So since the flux remains constant, and uh, here the torque is proportional to the armature current, the characteristics will be linear. So in this fashion you will get the torque versus armature current characteristics, but as the load increases due to armature reaction, again there will be the weakening of the field flux, so there will be slightly drooping characteristics you will, up, you will witness and uh, due to the iron and friction losses, uh, the, this is your gross torque, if I say this is your gross torque and due to iron and friction losses, there will be a slightly lower value of the useful torque and this will be drooping because of the armature reaction. So this is your useful torque. Now, uh, we have seen the speed and the current characteristics and the torque and the uh, armature current characteristics. Now if I plot the uh, speed versus torque characteristics. So we can, I can say this is torque is proportional to the IA. So from here you can see the speed 
and the torque characteristics that is if I say this is my speed n rpm and this is electromagnetic torque Newton meter so this will be the characteristics of the speed torque characteristics and uh, as we are having a constant speed uh, let us discuss how we can say the shunt motor to be constant speed motor uh, or you can say as we are having uh, a medium starting torque in the shunt motor and uh, this finds application in the centrifugal pumps, blowers, fans and uh, conveyors, some printing presses and some machine tools. So because uh, it, it, it gives only the medium starting torque unlike your DC series motor and, uh, L, and it, this motor should never be used for the heavy loading because the heavy loads require heavy value of uh, starting torque and uh, this shunt motor provides only the medium starting torque unlike your DC series motor. And uh, if I discuss the braking field characteristics, that is a braking field circuit characteristics, what is this braking field circuit characteristics? Now, during the running condition of the motor, let us say the motor is in running condition and if I say there will be the opening of the field circuit. So, this field circuit has been opened. Now, when the field circuit is open, what we witness is there will be a a very low value of the flux. Now, as there will be a very low value of flux, we have seen the relation from here, uh, your speed will be drastically increased. So, you will be having a drastically high speed and at this high speed, there will be a centrifugal force and which can pull out your windings from the motor and it may uh, buckle your committed segments and thereby the damage to the motor can occur or when there is a uh, opening of your field circuit. So, in order to protect from these effects, what we do is we use some overload, overload protecting devices. So, overload protecting devices. Now, as the flux is reducing or as the field is open, all the current will flow through this armature winding. Now, all the current which is flowing through this armature winding is having a higher value and as I know the torque is proportional to the armature current. So due to increasing the armature current there will be the higher value of torque and this higher value of torque or you can say as the armature current is increasing we have seen in the 3 point starter and the 4 point starter we are using the overload release coil where we said overload release coil OVC in the 3 point starter and 4 point starter. So, as you are having a higher value of armature current, this OVC is connected in series with the armature circuit. So, as this device is magnetized, there will be a short circuit of the no load release coil and the starter arm will be restored back by the spring action as there is no electromagnetic pull exerted by the overload release coil. So, we have seen that in the three point starter, if you want to, uh, if you want to know about it uh, very detailedly, you can go to the three point starter or the four point starter working. So, from there you can witness. So, when there is a field circuit breaking, uh, uh, we can use this phenomena that is the overload protecting devices to disconnect the motor from the supply. So, these are the other characteristics. Now, let us discuss one important characteristics or the special ability of the DC shunt motors. That important characteristics is the self speed regulation of the DC shunt motors. That means on switching the motor from no load to uh, no load to full load or no load to some introduction of load, there will be a surprisingly small change in the speed or the motor tries to stabilize the speed. So, let us see how the speed regulation takes place in the DC shunt motors. So, we have seen what is speed regulation uh, in, in my previous videos where I have explained clearly or nicely I have explained how what is the speed regulation of the DC motors. So, you can watch that video in case if you find difficult to understand what is speed regulation and uh, in order to clarify the difference between the speed regulation and the speed control, both are the different concepts. The speed regulation is a natural change in speed on application of load to the shaft and the speed control is the intentional change in the speed to achieve some specific work process. So, these both are different and I have explained in that video, you can watch it. So, if we discuss the speed regulation of the DC shunt motor, so initially let me say uh, when the motor is at no load, so when the motor is running at no load, let me say the speed is n rpm. The speed is at n rpm and uh, now on application of load, 
So the second condition is if we go through the stepwise analysis, first I am saying the motor is at no load and it is running at n RPM and when the motor is or when on adding on adding the load to the shaft, the speed gradually reduces or decreases because you have added a load because you can witness it from the uh, general outside phenomena happening. You, you are going on a rickshaw and uh, someone is pedaling the rickshaw. Uh, as the load increases, you have to increase the pedaling force. Now, if you don't increase the pedaling force, the rickshaw motion will be or the speed of the rickshaw will be reduced. So, similarly here, on application of load, the speed of the motor reduces definitely. So, now next step is the speed reduces. But at the onset or at the beginning of the load interaction to the shaft, as we have seen, the speed definitely decreases and I know my speed that is the back EMF is proportional to the speed. So, your back EMF is proportional to the speed and as the speed falls, the back EMF falls. So, if I plot these characteristics, so I am plotting here. So, this is your speed and with time. So, with time I am plotting the characteristics and this is your back EMF with time. So, initially we have seen the speed reduces on application of load to the shaft. So, the characteristics will be like this. The characteristics will be like this. Now, we have seen there will be a uh, reduction in the back EMF. And uh, as there is a reduction in the back EMF, my net voltage increases. Because your net voltage, E net can be given by E minus or let me say uh, here we have seen the supply voltage is the V where the supply voltage remains constant and uh, V minus EB. This is the net voltage which is equal to V minus EB. So, as your EB is reducing and the supply voltage V is constant, your E net increases and as this net voltage increases, your armature current increases and I know from this relation where the torque is proportional to P phi Z IA by 2 pi, this is A sorry, this is 2 pi A. So, as the torque is proportional to the armature current, so as IA increases, your torque increases and this increased torque will increase the speed of the motor, will increase the speed of the motor. So, if I plot this characteristics, so if I say this is my armature current and this is my torque with time with time and bloating. So, there will be a slight uh, you see increase in the armature current and as there will be increase in the armature current, there will be increase in the torque. So, if I plot the whole characteristics from no load to on load, so initially the speed characteristics will be drooping and uh, again the motor stabilizes here. So, here you will see, you will be witnessing these characteristics, the speed and the back end of decreases and here you will be seeing the armature current and the torque increases. That means the motor is able to regulate its speed itself. There is no separate mechanism we are employing here to regulate the speed. This is the beauty of this shunt motor where it regulates its speed on full load conditions. That is, it, it is compensating the speed. You can see this is at no load. And again, this is it. This will be slightly, uh, slightly lesser, slightly lesser, very slightly. And uh, here you are having on load. This is on load. And uh, you can see the motor is stabilizing itself. So, this is the beauty of the DC shunt motor, which where it self regulates its speed, unlike other motors. And for this reason, we, we, we can say this motor as a constant flux motor, or you can say the constant speed motor which is employed in the industrial applications where, where we require constant speed like in uh, conveyors, elevators, in the metros you can see the elevator, uh, uh, sorry that is the uh, escalator is going at a smooth speed with the same constant speed you can employ that, employ the DC shunt motors as well. Uh, so, in the constant speed motors uh, that is uh, in the constant speed applications uh, like uh, uh, conveyors, uh, escalators and uh, the elevators as well as in the 
uh, mills and uh, you can say fans so wherever the constant speed application required you can employ this shunt motors because we have seen the special ability of the motor to regulate its speed and application of load so this is the beauty of the load uh, beauty of this motor and uh, here the dc shunt motors are used specially where we require the medium starting torque and constant speed so wherever we require the medium starting torque and the constant speed we can employ this shunt motors uh, because here we are having medium starting torque unlike the series motors that is the dc series motor because here the total current is going to get divided in the field winding as well as in the armature winding but in the shunt motors where i am having the field winding connected in series with the armature the total current flows through this field winding which is in series with the armature therefore i am having a higher value of current unlike uh, in the shunt motors so that is the reason why we are having a medium starting torque here so wherever uh, the application requires medium starting torque and the constant speed you can employ this dc shunt motors so this is all about the uh, dc shunt motors i hope you understood well please subscribe to our channel thank you